Today was kind of a special day for me and the F, the FreeX uh, Skyview. I uh, found out how fast it could go, at least with no winds. I think it can go a lot faster than what I clocked, but uh, I was able to clock it with very little no, or very little wind at uh, 70 kilometers per hour, so that's 43.5 miles an hour. Uh, I do believe I could have got more out of it if I was in a wider open space, if I was out in the desert or someplace where I could just punch it for like a good 10 to 20 seconds, but I couldn't. But here's my setup. I'm using right now the uh, the Terret. Uh, let's see here. It's the Terret uh, TL300 OSD. I have it attached with uh, two-sided tape along with the actual controller. Kind of looks hokey, but uh, it does work. That double-sided tape that I'm using will not come off. I mean, it's pretty solid and it's heat resistant. Um, I'm also sporting the now Wakara D2 gimbal. Uh, worked hard to get the original one to work, but it was only good for a couple of flights. Also using, as you can see, I've actually installed the uh, extended fuselage. I now use the 5400 milliamp batteries instead of the 3000 that this one came with. And you can see the difference in size, just how much juice you're going to get with that if you do cross over and do get that act. That fuselage is just worth it. I mean, you're going to get more flying time. All right. Also using the, uh, as far as FPV, I'm using the TS832TX along with the uh, Cloverleaf antenna for long distance. My monitor, I'm using the Boss Cam. It's all Boss Cam as well as the uh, TX Boss Cam Galaxy D2 7 inch monitor with uh, dual antennas. Got the 5.8 or 14 dBi high gain uh, long distance antenna. Works really great. I use this setup here. It's almost exact setup to get my, uh, what was it, the XK380 at 0.8 miles, a mile away. So this is, has a really strong connection if you do have the open area. If you don't, don't have an open area and you lose visual, not just lose visual, if, if obstructions get in the way, then of course you're going to be limited. Okay. So that's that, that's the monitor. The way I had to attach it, looks like that's glue there, but that's not really what's attaching it. What's attaching it is this thing called Cubon. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Oh, there you go. It's right there and right here. You don't really need much of it. It's called Cubon. You can get it on eBay or just do a YouTube search on it. Stuff as strong as steel. So all you have to do is just mount the uh, the D2, Galaxy D2 on the bracket that it came with, but you're going to use, well, what I used, you don't have to, but what I used was the actual uh, Cubon to secure it, and it's not coming off, it's like steel, so pretty crazy. Now I use a generic uh, holder, this one I guess I said it was for the DJI, DJI, but what I had to do was the loop that came with this, I kind of had to file it down with with a Dremel or a rotary tool so that this part would fit on top and it's just secured with your basic Allen screw now I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to use the Cubon to secure it more but I have not taken this apart yet I might take the receiver apart if I see a video from Dustin Dunnell when he likes to go long distance on everything he does and this uh, this free X is definitely something that you want to do a lot of mods to that you can. So if he wants to get more distance out of that and he shows a way to further modify this receiver, that's what I'm going to do. But I want to make sure that I can take it off without without uh, having to, you know, without this being a problem. So I don't want to use the cube bond on it just yet unless I take it apart and know that I, this will stay on and I don't have to worry about it. If I don't have to worry about it, then I'm going to secure it even tighter. But yeah, it's tight right now. It's not coming apart. And that's basically it. That's my rig right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and boot it up so that you can see uh, so you can see the telemetry screen, how it works. Uh, just give me a second here. I'm going to go ahead and oops, go ahead and turn on the receiver first. Actually, there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the high capacity battery in. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this with one hand, so I'm just going to drop the phone for a second. You'll see nothing. Talk amongst yourselves while I put this in. Thanks.
should have given you guys music on hold. Let's see. Uh, you get to listen to me hum instead. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, for now. Oops, are we still filming? Come on. Get focus here. For, okay. So I went ahead and I put the high capacity battery inside. Where I live right now, uh, I don't have to worry about the GPS lock because I'm not going to get it. It's just not going to happen. But uh, that's where the high capacity battery goes. And here is the controller for the OSD, the Terrid OSD. I'm going to go ahead and turn on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Probably not because it's so bright. I'm going to turn on the computer. Turn that bad boy down. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to find the right channel for this. I might have to do it inside where I can see. Uh, well, let's see if I can. Oh, move. Oh. Okay. Let's see here. I think I need to be a channel E7. Okay, don't make me look bad. Oh, I forgot to turn on my camera. Duh, that doesn't help. And let's see here, I'm gonna turn that up so you can see the gimbal's working. Let's turn on the camera. Okay. All right, there we go, there we go. And so there you see the telemetry screen. And that is the screen that I was looking at today to see how far away the actual uh, 3X was from me. Uh, you can see that's the, the vertical height, how high you're going, uh, the speed, the S is the kilometers per hour, that's what I was looking at today. And so, yeah, that's what, how I was ever able to monitor exactly how fast this sucker was going. Uh, whenever you're, you're setting this, this up, when you set it up, you have to hit this button right here. Oops, what are you doing, going crazy here? Calm down, calm down. Okay. For the uh, turret, you just need to press this button, and that's your home button. It does, it's a lot of things. It's your menu button, your home button, and what will happen is, I don't know if you can see this, probably not, but it should say home once you press it. I'm going to press now. I said I'm going to press now. There you go. It says home, okay. Now everything's reset to zero, and so when I take off, that is going to show all that information right now. Oh, six satellites right now, okay. Uh, but definitely, oh, and I actually even have green lights on the, uh, on the free X, but I'm not about to turn it on right now. Not happening. Also switch the blades over to the uh, Phantom 3 props. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but I think that was one reason why I was able to get a little bit more speed. Uh, made a little bit more noise, even though I balanced the blades, but Definitely felt more speed, more control over it. So, all right. So that's my initial setup. Hope you guys can uh, get something off of it that will help you. Uh, obviously, you're going to be spending a little bit of money if you're going to do the FPV project. Free X was, I bought mine for $189. You could get the one that already has the FPV on it for $450. And, you know, that's, that's got all the bells and whistles on it that you need. But the thing I like about doing it on my own is that all the stuff that I'm doing with it, mainly I could transfer a lot of it to another machine so like this receiver the antennas uh, my gimbal and even my camera well the camera obviously but my gimbal the, pro the propellers I can transfer that someplace else now if I get another quadcopter that's similar to this you know that's kind of a do-it-yourselfer all I really need to do is get another TX for it and another OSD you know, so that's really all I need, and I'm good to go. So anyway, uh, that's it. This is Scott Gibbons signing out. Hope you uh, like. Take care. Bye.